I thought I'll kick off this week's video with a quote from my lunch, which I felt was appropriate. So this is from uh, a kebab shop in Singapore and it says one of the most important things you can do on this earth is to let people know they are not alone. So that's very appropriate because one of the reasons why I'm doing all these videos on YouTube is to kind of uh, share my opinions on my hobbies, one of them being fountain pens. So glad you could join me today. So today we're going to be looking at the Pelican Sovereign M600. Um, I have featured the M200 a few times in my previous videos. So um, decided to pick up um, this pen late last year during Fountain Pen Day. So before we get into the pen, let me just start off with the box that it came with, which, which can hardly be filled into the frame. It comes in an absolutely massive box. Um, I feel like I'm doing an unboxing. So basically, um, the outer box comes with an inner box, which opens like, um, like this. Inside, you will get a little um, synthetic uh, pen wrap or pen uh, cover. Nobody uses them, I suppose. Um, and then you get, um, within here, you get some other packaging. And underneath this, you'll get some literature, which I have never, I didn't even read it. So there's a warranty. Uh, and some some paper uh, descriptions of um, the various Pelican products. So this was an interesting page that I kind of flipped to. So this pen, um, so Pelican designs, um, obviously is an ink manufacturer as well, and they've designed their inks to go with their pens because of um, their pens' tendency to have a little bit of you know, wet, you know, extra wetness compared to other pen manufacturers. So, uh, so they have designed their own inks, which is the 4001. I think they also have the Edel, Edelstein series of inks down here. For this particular pen, which I'm gonna go do a quick look today, I've actually inked it up with 4001 Royal Blue. So let's just keep the packaging very quickly and let's look at the pen itself so my long suffering M200 um, I'll just bring it back again so looking at the the sizes of the pens maybe it's better if I put them down on the table you can see that the M600 is it's definitely longer by by you know maybe I would say maybe slightly less than a centimeter. However, when you kind of take off their caps, you can clearly see that the the difference isn't that great. Right? So I'm lining the pens up, and essentially the difference in their in their lengths is kind of just only this. Um, the other thing to take note of is, you know, I always mention that M200 section is very, very short. You can tell that the M600 section is equally short. Could actually be the same diameter as well. So I'm just going to keep the M200 since um, that's not going to be the focus of today's video. So looking at the, the pen, um, starting, starting from the cap, we get um, the pelican um, uh, mother and the chick on the end of the finial. That's a true uh, finial with a design down here. You get the pelican uh, beak down here as a clip, which works very well. Um, and then you get the band uh, down here that says pelican 
sovereign Germany. So it doesn't actually say M six hundred on the on the band. On the barrel, I can't open this because obviously this is a piston filler, as you you guys would probably know. Um, you have this end that you turn the piston. It's a very smooth actuating piston, as you would expect. Um, the rest of the barrel is plain. However, I'm not sure whether you can make it out. You probably can't. Uh, maybe if you kind of uh, magnify it a bit. But this area of the pan down here is it's kind of semi-clear, so you can see whether or not uh, you have some ink in it. As I mentioned earlier on, the section area is pretty small and you have this little uh, golden ring around it. And I guess the main reason why you get a pelican is the nib. So this is the 14 karat nib. Um, I have it in medium and very, very nice, uh, you know, scroll work down here uh, in, in the nib design. You'll notice, I noticed something when I got this pen that the, the nib is actually a little bit more folded or curved compared to other brands of nib. So it's as in the shoulders are kind of, uh, you know, molded in more. Um, looking at the, the feet, lots and lots of fins, which indicates it's a very wet rider, which it is. So. Let me just bring up some paper and we'll do a little bit of writing. Um, I'm not sure whether I should post or not. So basically looking at the length of the pen, I would say that it's, it's pretty much ideal for me, right? So it's an ideal length, uh, even though it's just a hair longer than the M200, I think that compensates, um, you know, enough for my hand size. Post it. Um, you can post it. Obviously, this area when you post the pen, you actually can see that there's like a little uh, level down here, which the cap actually grips onto. It doesn't grip onto the piston mechanism, which would be disastrous probably. So you can post it, and it posts very very well. And you know, it's it's still okay balance for me. Um, just doing my little balance test down here, as you would probably expect. The pen is ever slow, so slightly back, um, either right in the middle or slightly to the back uh, in terms of balance. So this is the Pelican. M600 and I have it in the medium. And ink is uh, Pelican 4001 Royal Blue. So very bad handwriting today. Uh, like I mentioned earlier on, the pen, if you use like inks like, um, you know, like are known for their wetness, for example, the Pilot range of inks or any other Waterman range of inks, it's it will be even wetter than this. So I think it was a good idea to kind of use Royal Blue or the Pelican series of inks to kind of temper the wetness, right? In the, the nib itself is very, very, very smooth, as you would expect. Um, it's, it's not exactly, you know, very soft, right? However, there is a tiny bit of spring, um, you know, in, in, the, in the way the nib actually moves. So looking at um, this pen and kind of comparing it with some other pens, I think we bring back the M, uh, M200 down here. 
The length of the pen, if you compare it with other pens like the Lamy Safari and even the Twisbees, and since I have it with me, the Platinum 3776, you can kind of get the idea of, of the length of the pen in comparison with uh, some other pens which I have with me right now. So it's not, um, it's not too big, it is not too small. It's probably the Goldilocks size when it comes to pens. Um, elephant in the room would obviously be the M800. Um, I, you know, I'm still on the fence whether or not I want to get the M800. Obviously, that's a huge step up in price between the 600 and the 800. Um, the other thing is, you know, I'm not sure you know, based on how I feel holding it, it feels fine, the M600. I'm not sure whether or not M800, would, what it would actually bring. Obviously, it would bring a little bit of length, a little bit of girth, a little bit of ink capacity. Um, I think the difference in ink capacity isn't that great between the M M600 and the M800. It's probably around like 0.25 milliliters. This one holds 1.75 milliliters, which is you know, not a consideration uh, that I would actually be worried about. But uh, that difference in price, uh, you know, is actually what was holding me back um, for me to choose the M800 versus the M600. Um, so my closing thoughts about this pen, would I get this pen again um, if I kind of lost it or broke it? I'm not too sure. I probably would be tempted based on what I know to kind of go with the M800 um, maybe wait for a sale and kind of pick it up then uh, I'm not sure what your thoughts are um, there isn't really anything wrong with this pen uh, as as it works for me you know size wise and writing wise so that concludes my video I hope you found it useful uh, let me know your thoughts. If you have both the M600 and the M800, which one do you think would fit uh, me and maybe some of the other viewers? Um, really appreciate you watching my videos and I hope you have a good day today. Thanks. Bye-bye.